Don't, don't get me wrong. I like this anime a lot. It's really, really good. Fan fantastic even. It's just, why are both of his sisters in love with him? Hey, hello? Anime? Hey, listen, how do you feel about, and, and hear me out here, how do you feel about a story where maybe just one of his sisters is in love with him? Hello? Hello? God fucking damn it. This is why Miyazaki said anime was a mistake. Now, your first question might be, why do you care about this anime throwing in some stupid bullshit when there's a million dumpster fire isekai literally built around it? And that's exactly it. I don't care about what some fucking cum dumpster isekai or comedy anime is doing. They can burn in a fire. If you want that kind of thing, all the power to you, but there's no shortage of it. Check the alley behind any 7-Eleven and you'll find an entire goddamn crate of it. I care because actually good anime are rare and elusive like unicorns, and the more anime that shoot themselves in the dick and bring themselves down from truly great to merely good just so they can stand on the level of <gasps> is infuriating. So all of this is to say someone needs to take a dump on this shit, are you going to? No, no one else is willing to say this, but I am. Anime is garbage. I am the king of weeaboos. I am the hero that Gotham needs. I am- Wait, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. In order to be able to explain just how awful this shit is, let's take a look at why summertime rendering is so goddamn good, and then once we're all on the same page, we can explore how the dumpster fire that is anime, well, I won't say ruins it, but makes it, comparatively, a lot more shit than it would otherwise be. First, obviously, the mystery and the time loop thing. Now, I don't want to say this is a perfect mystery setup, but it's pretty damn close. It's a really, really brilliant use of the loop mechanic. Take ReZero, for example. ReZero uses loops to gradually progress the story and kind of point it in different directions and tie death into Subaru's character. It's a good use, it's fine, it works, but in Summertime Render, it's so much more narrow. What it does is constrict the story. The first episode is one loop that introduces us to the characters and a small fraction of the story. Then in the second, it shows us a little more as we get used to the loop mechanic. And then we see how time naturally plays out on the island without Shinpei's interference in the third, and then he starts using his knowledge of the previous loops to try and stop the ending. And since he starts back at the beginning, we don't see loops as chapters, and we don't see the four days as a linear sequence of events. Instead, they're a cohesive whole that the entire story revolves around. And then, I'm not going to spoil it, but because he starts later and later every time, and because it keeps adding more and more into this loop mechanic, it just keeps building on this massive sense of urgency as Shinpei realizes the strategy and realizes there's already things he can't undo. Whereas in ReZero, when and where Subaru restarts just feels kind of arbitrary, everything about summertime rendering is carefully built to unravel the mystery of the island. Again, not that ReZero's looping is bad, far from it, just in summertime rendering, everything about it is a very, very deliberate and cohesive whole, and that's what makes it brilliant. Okay, so, how does the anime bullshit ruin this? Well, why does the loop have to start with him buried face first in this woman's tits, and then immediately go on to him seeing his little sister's underwear? It could have given us anything, something intelligent. Instead, it's like, yup, this again, this will never get old. But the worst part about this is that it's actually kind of smart. Hizuru's tits and cup size are actually a pretty important part of the story and how she relates to everyone in the small town. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be. This is a literally fiction. The author and the anime writers could have done anything they wanted, but no, they did this shit. And same with Mio's panties, because the shadows can only be the person as they were copied. <laughs> If you know what panties they're wearing, you can tell if they're a shadow or not, and do you see how this is infuriating? It's like they're trying to be fucking clever about it. Sure, I guess, it's kind of smart. But again, you could have done 
anything to write this point in. Her socks, for example, her hair, I don't know, man. Pick anything else. Sure, it's part of the story, but it's not actually part of the story. It's a thing it has to rub in our faces for anime points. And so when I see this, I get sucked right out of it because I'm reminded that I'm watching anime. A good story should make you forget that you're watching a story. You should just be able to get lost in it and experience it for what it is. But anime has to be like, Hey buddy, you're watching anime right now. I hope you didn't forget. We really don't want you to forget that you're watching anime. Anime is love. Anime is life. I give my life for anime. In summertime rendering, instead of just being lost in the story, every time he starts a new loop, instead of being like, oh, this again, I'm like, oh god, this again. This shouldn't happen. I shouldn't have this thought. I should not be aware that I'm watching anime. I, I just... When are we gonna move past this? I keep saying, you can have your anime bullshit not be stupid. If you want a story with a lot of anime bullshit, just write a story that can take it. My Dress Up Darling, for example, does a great job of it because the story basically is anime bullshit. And so it takes this and goes from there, not the other way around. Steins Gate is probably the best example because the entire story is built on irony. It's about cringy weeaboos, so throwing in some cringy weeaboo shit obviously makes sense. How does my favorite movie of all time, Kimi no Nawa, handle this? It has the characters play with Mitsuha's boobs while they think they're alone until Yatsuha walks in and they get embarrassed. <laughs> This is something they would actually do. It doesn't just go, ah, oh, here, panties. It thinks about the characters as if they're real people, not vehicles for anime bullshit. People do shit like this all the time. That isn't the problem. The problem is that anime is so disconnected from reality that it doesn't even realize this and instead just rams the most contrived shit up its own asshole. And the really stupid part of summertime rendering is, it almost seems self-aware about how dumb this all is, trying to be fucking clever about it. But also because of this character. <laughs> The lolly demon god that speaks like an old man. I hate this. This shit needs to stop. It wasn't cute when ReZero did it. It wasn't cute when 86 did it. And dear god, it was not cute when Mushoku Tensei did it. And it wasn't cute any of the other billion times anime did this. And it makes me want to light my computer on fire. It's not even a trope at this point. It's just literally the same shallow fucking character. Here's where I need to give Summertime Rendering credit though, because it actually gives her as few lines as possible. In fact, most of her lines are spoken through not one, not two, but three proxy characters, all of whom are just so, so much more interesting than her. And not only that, it actually makes her talk normal for half her goddamn lines. Presumably because she's copied like a few different people or whatever, but the point is that there are a weird number of excuses for this character to avoid opening her mouth. So they this shitty fucking trope is like orders of magnitude less shit than it would otherwise be. But, uh, here's the thing, and this, this is what really bothers me about this. There's a difference between adding suspense by withholding information and just having other characters talk for someone. When they center the plot around this one cliche and then come up with as many reasons as possible for her not to talk, it almost feels like the anime knows she's a horrible character and is ashamed of her and is trying to hide her as much as possible. This might even be literally what happened, so my question is, why even bother then? Seriously, what, did you bring it to the publisher and they were like, no, no, this story is too good. What, did you think people were really going to buy this? How cute. Hey, listen, have you heard of this thing called stupid bullshit? Put some of that in. No, put a lot of that in. In fact, put as much as you want in, as long as the as much as you want is at least way too fucking much. Because again, this anime is really, really fucking good. The protagonist, Shinpei, isn't even an irredeemable loser like most anime. What? I know. In fact, he's actually fucking cool. And not like anime cool either, like actual people cool. He cares about his friends and his family, but he left them behind for a job in Tokyo. And he doesn't feel bad about it, but he 
does feel bad about the way that he left, and it's his guilt that drives him forward, coming back home to his sister's funeral. He's relatable because he's realistic. He's the small town hero coming back home, and he's more worldly than all of his friends, but also more distant. And he's just so down to earth. He meets his favorite author, and he respects her completely. He doesn't fanboy, actually hold this thought, we'll get back to it in a sec, and he doesn't do any of the random anime protagonist shit. He's a young man trying to get through life. He's doing his best, but it's not perfect because no one is. And he's fucking hot, and he's a good dude. And it's because he's such a good character that it's so ridiculous that the story has to dump all of this shit on him. He doesn't even fall into any of the stupid pitfalls that anime normally does. His sisters are both in love with him, but instead of being like, whoa, how do I deal with this? My sisters are so hot. He mostly just never gets a chance to react to this, like, ever. But not only are his sisters both in love with him, he starts every loop with his head buried in a pair of huge, massive honkers. He's forced to look at his sister's underpants several fucking times. And then, get this, he's actually forced to do some random dumbass fanboy shit for plot reasons, even though his character wouldn't actually do this. He has to say her name, so he does this cringy thing as if he's running into his favorite voice actor at comic -Ed. And again, they could have picked any way for him to say your name. And this one isn't even bad, they could have made it, you know, more fucking normal, but they didn't. Everything just feels so forced, and it pulls you right out of the story every time this shit happens. And because his character is just so normal and so cool, it's even more jarring than it would normally be. His character is almost completely at odds with the story itself. And same with the waifus, like, Shadow Ushio is just always in a swimsuit. Why? Because Shadows can only naturally project outfits they copied, and because Ushio was copied in a swimsuit, she can only use that. She could wear other clothes, but they get in the way of her shadow powers. Oh yeah, no, totally, there was just no other way, dude. This dick in my hand right now, jerking off to this, was just completely unavoidable. Just, there was just no other way. Fucking unbelievable. Still going to jerk off to it though, wasn't lying about that. Hey, listen, just because I don't like this doesn't mean I'm not going to fap to it. In fact, this is the problem. I'm only human. Anime is enabling me. I have a problem. Someone stop me, it's not my fault. No, wait a second, she copied Ushio when she was wearing normal clothes. What the fuck, God damn it! And now my dick's gone soft. Great, thank you anime, thanks a lot. You know, people got really confused why I was doing this to 86, even though I thought it was overall pretty good. Part 1 at least, part 2 was a fucking abomination. So in case I haven't been explaining this properly, let's just spell it out. I love anime, but I feel like anime doesn't love me back. There's just so many stories out there that are so thoughtful, so emotional, so imaginative, but they just keep shooting themselves in the fucking dick just to throw some titties in there. I keep getting absorbed, getting invested in these stories, only for it to throw it back in my face, being like, no, we're only good some of the time. It's an abusive relationship. I love you, anime. Why are you doing this to me? Why do you have to do this? It doesn't have to be like this. You can be better. We can be better. Anime. I'm here for you, but I need you to be there for me too. Together, we can beat this, this addiction to anime titties. I don't like you when you're using. It's not you. You're not this person. You're just you, anime. You're just you. And I know the real you is still in there somewhere, without all these titties, without all these panties, without all this wincest, without all this disgusting lolly shit, without all these other anime titties. The real you isn't all of these things, you're just animation, Japanese animation, you're you, you're just you, and all you need to do is just be yourself and stop sucking so much goddamn conk all of the time. And I mean that literally. Anime, you keep saying that you can change, that you can beat this, but I need to believe that you can. You think you need to be this person, this thing, with all of these titties to get people to like you, but you don't. You're better when you're just you. You don't need all of this bullshit. I don't need all of this bullshit. I just want you, the real you. Can you promise me, anime? Can you promise me that you'll just-
All right, fuck it. We're a hentai channel now. Subscribe for my upcoming video on the classic philosophical erge, Xenon, about the line between dreams and reality, and about living in the moment. Listen, would you rather play an eroge that wants to tell a good story, or watch an anime that wants to be a hentai but has to limit itself to what it can show on television? Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll put that video here when it comes out, but in the meantime, check out my video on the classic time travel eroge and precursor to Steins Gate, you know, the girl who chants love at the edge of the world. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for your time, friends, and I will see you in the next video.